Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will explain SOC components of ESP32 and I will explain pin diagram of ESP32. So after watching this video, you will be having fair enough idea about how to use ESP32 module for project development. So first of all, I will discuss about SOC components of ESP32. SOC means system on chip component. Here you can observe we have ESP32 module and with this module first component is antenna. You can observe here antenna is placed. See this antenna is used for wireless communication. With this module of ESP32 group module we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection at 2.4 gigahertz of frequency. So that wireless connection that happens with the use of this antenna. In some applications, you may need large range communication. So with ESP32 room 32U, we can also connect external antenna for range expansion. But with normal module, we don't have that facility. See with this module, we have on-chip antenna over here that is used to connect Bluetooth and Wi-Fi at 2.4 gigahertz of frequency. But if you want long range communication, in that case, you should upgrade this module to ESP32 Room 32U, where we have external antenna connection by which one can have longer range, right? Second SOC component is processor. You can observe inside this case, we have ESP Room 32 processor. See this processor is dual core 32 bit Extensa LX6 processor. It is having 32 KB of I cache per core. Here we have dual core, right? With each core, we have 32 KB of I cache. I cache means instruction cache. One should know, see cache memory, that is the fastest memory and that is integrated inside processor which will be resulting into faster execution of program. Here we have 32 KB of instruction cache per core. Here we have dual core with each core 32 KB of I cache is available. With this processor we have single precision floating point unit. So along with this processor we have single precision floating point unit. And this processor can handle clock speed up to 240 megahertz, right? Now, let me discuss about next SOC component that is IO pin. You can observe here, I have shown around 31 IO pins, but with this processor, it can handle up to 34 GP IO pin. And all these pins are multiplexed pins means each of this pin is having multiple functionalities. So in pin diagram, I'll explain how it is having multiple functionalities. Right now consider with this module, we can have up to 34 GPIO pins and those are having multiplexed functionalities. All these pins are operated at 3.3 voltage. It is having 18 channels for ADC. ADC means analog to digital converter. So here we have 18 channels for ADC with 12 bits. We have two channels for DAC. DAC means digital to analog converter. So here we have two channels of DAC with 8 bits and 18 channels of ADC with 12 bits. Here we have 10 channels for capacitive touch as well as we have RTC GPIOs. See RTG GPIOs that we use it to wake up from deep sleep. If this processor is there in deep sleep mode. See this processor could be there in deep sleep mode and that we have it to save the power. The reason is in IoT applications, usually we use this module along with the battery. To save the power, we keep this in deep sleep mode where it will be using minimum power. To wake up this processor from deep sleep mode, we need to use RTC GPIO pin. 
from RTC GPIO pin by giving interrupt one can wake up this processor from deep sleep mode. Here almost all the GPIO supports PWM output. In pin diagram I will show how we have multiplexed functionality with all these pins. Right now consider on this module you can observe 31 pins but this processor can handle up to 34 GPIOs. Right. Now let me discuss about next SOC component that is enable pin. See here we have push button with enable pin and that enable pin that is available over here. So one can say this enable pin that is connected over here along with this push button. Usually this enable pin that is active high pin. So in usual condition it will be having 3.3 voltage and if you want to reset this processor then you will have to press this button. By pressing this button you will be keeping this pin at zero voltage and it will start to reset this processor. When you start this ESP32 at a time you will be observing this enable pin that will be active high means in usual condition it will be there at 3.3 voltage. Right. See next component is micro USB port. See that micro USB port is available over here. See this micro USB port that is having two functionalities. One is to program this module. If you want to load the program inside this processor then you will have to use this micro USB port as well as this micro USB port that we need to use in case of power supply. So see it is used to program ESP32 Groom module and it can also be used to provide power to ESP32 Groom module. Here we have micro USB port one should know with USB port we have 5 voltage of supply to the board. So this will provide 5 voltage over here right but inside this module we have voltage regulator ICs and that will be regulating voltage to 3.3 voltage right. So here by USB port we can program this module and by this same port we can provide power as well. It will be giving power with 5 voltage. Inside module we have voltage regulated IC which will be regulating that signal to 3.3 voltage that even I will show you in this video itself. Now next SOC component that is external supply. You can observe here we have V in and ground pin. With this pin we can apply external supply and with this pin we can apply supply up to 5 voltage in between these two terminal right and that 5 voltage that is getting regulated down to 3.3 voltage on the board. For that regulation here we have voltage regulation IC. That even I'll explain in this video itself. See as and when you use this for IoT applications, for remote applications, we need to give power supply from here. If you don't have computer with this USB connection at that time but obviously we need to give supply to this module that we can give it over here right. At max one can give 5 voltage supply. If you give higher than 5 voltage supply then there is a possibility of thermal runaway of this module right. Now let me discuss about next SOC component that is voltage regulator IC. See this is voltage regulator IC. As I have told you here we provide power supply of 5 voltage right. But this entire processor and IO ports that is functioning at 3.3 voltage. So this voltage regulator IC that will be regulating voltage and it will provide output of 3.3 voltage right. Now let me discuss about next SOC component that is boot button. See that boot button is available over here. See it is internally connected with GPIO 0 pin. This is what you need to note down. This boot button that is internally connected with GPIO 0. It is manually used to put ESP32 into firmware download mode. So as and when you want to download firmware inside processor 
at the time we will be using this boot button how to enter into bootloader mode for that you will have to press this button first and you will have to hold this so we'll have to press and hold this button secondly you will have to press and release enable button so here we have enable button that you need to press and release and at last we need to release this boot button so that is how one can enter into bootloader mode by which one can download the firmware right now let me discuss about next soc component that is two power external io you can observe here we have three v3 ground terminal this two terminal that we use it to power external io as and when you interface external io to which you need to provide power as well in iot applications we will be using sensors we will be using actuators right to sensors and actuators we need to provide power that power can be provided from here right from this 3v3 and ground terminal it will be providing supply of 3.3 voltage right now let me discuss about next soc component that is cp2102 bridge ic that is available over here see this bridge ic that will be converting usb signals into uart signals for programming of esp32 see here we have esp32 here we have usb connection right usb signals are there at 5 voltage we need to program this at 3.3 voltage so this ic that will be a bridge right and this ic is also useful in serial communication so it allows the ESP32 to be programmed via USB and it will support serial communications. It is used for firmware flashing and serial monitoring. Here maximum speed will be there up to 1 Mbps. And before you use this, do not forget to install drivers of CP2102 driver. See in some other modules, this bridge IC could be CH. 340 right so in other boards you will be observing this ic will be there so as and when you use esp32 groom module and if your bridge ic is cp2102 bridge ic in that case first we will have to install the drivers of this ic after that only you can program this module right now let me discuss about next soc component that is power led you can observe here we have a power LED. See this LED will indicate that we are giving power to this module. So as and when you turn on this module, once you power it the power to this module, this LED that is getting turned on, right? Now let me discuss about last SOC component that is onboard LED that is available over here. See this onboard LED that is connected to GPIO02 pin of ESP32 and that we use as and when we don't want to connect external LED. The reason is on module LED is available. So why should we connect external LED? If you want to showcase something is on or off, then you can use this LED, right? So that is how all the SOC components that I have discussed, right? Now, let me explain pin diagram of ASP32 groom module. See here we have all the pins you can observe. See this pin that is enable pin right that is to reset this processor. Here we have V in and ground that we use it to supply this module right externally. See if you don't have USB supply over here in that case we will be using V in and ground by which we can provide external supply to this and to io if you want to provide supply then this module can provide a supply over here that is having voltage of 3.3 voltage right and other than that here we have gpio pins you can observe with this gpio pin we have multiplexed functionalities here you can observe multiplexed functionalities that is listed like See here we have ADC 1-0, ADC 1-3. So that is how ADC channels are there. 
right here we have sense vp and sense vn with this two terminal see this sense vp and sense vn that we use it for whole effect sensor using whole effect sensor which is integrated with this module one can detect electromagnetic field right and using whole effect sensor one can deploy many projects see these four terminals those are input terminals only right so that is also mentioned over here here rtc gpio 0 rtc gpio 3 that is how things are mentioned see this rtc gpio pin that we use it to wake up this processor as if this processor is there in deep sleep mode then by giving external interrupt from these pins we can wake up this processor if you observe by this green color i have mentioned touch 9 touch 8 touch 7 so that is regarding capacitive touch channels right so touch 9 touch 8 touch 7 touch 6 that we use it for capacitive touch sensing if you observe here xlet 32p xlet 32n is given that is for external crystal clock with this module likewise there are many other functionalities that is mentioned like you can observe here mosi scl sda mosi sck ss so this terminals that one can use it for serial communication with spi protocol if you observe here we have txd rxd so that one can use it for serial communication likewise there are multiplexed functionalities that is available right and all these functionalities that one can understand by implementing some basic level projects so in future coming videos i'll be deploying some project with the use of this module by which you will get to know how to program this module and how to use all these pins i hope you have enjoyed this video still if you have any confusion just place that in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video